All right, welcome back to Steady Ball. And you guys know that I love good passing game. I love good schemes. And there's a lot of ways to build a passing game. And it's always key if you can build it off of what you do in the run game. And so I'm always loving it when I'm watching tape and, and I'm seeing people building different pass concepts together, tied in with their run game, but have good, solid answers for their quarterback. And so last Thursday night, I was watching the Miami Dolphins play. And I love what Mike McDaniel is doing in the pass game down in Miami. Got a lot of pieces. Two was playing great in the system. It comes off their run game, but I really like what he's doing and building answers and building compliments uh, out of the same formation. So that's what we're gonna look at today. This is to me what it looks like to build a good pass offense, a good pass scheme that makes it easy for your quarterback and gives your quarterbacks answers in each and every situation. All right, so here's what I love that Mike McDaniel's doing is so many things are giving the same presentation to the defense and he's showing them a bunch of different good solid pass concepts off of it. So here's what you notice. We got Tyreek Hill in the wing. You notice the tight alignment by everybody else. We're gonna have the back offset and then we're gonna motion somebody to the other side, okay? So this is where everything stems from. They got run game that can come off of this, but it's gonna stem right here. So on this particular play, we're gonna come out and we're gonna free release the back right here. So we're gonna have a skinny post, we're gonna have a rail, we're gonna have our back on a choice route, then on this back side, we're gonna run a return by Tyreek Hill. So the idea is really to go one to two to three to four, depending on the coverage that you get. So in this particular case, we get a middle closed. So what I wanna do here is with this guy going outside, I'm gonna read this guy to start out. This guy moves that direction. I'm gonna to try to hit the skinny post. Corner covers the skinny post. Now I've got a chance for the rail to my back running the choice off of this outside linebacker once again, who's moving to that side. So good answers, no matter what you have, okay? We get a cover two look, this guy comes down, we're gonna get a two on one shot off of the safety, inside out. We're gonna go to quarters, this guy's out here, this guy's dropping down, okay, he's running into that. If I don't have this quick, he's running into the corner. Now I feel good with my isolation of my back on the choice route against this linebacker, then I will work back to this return right there. So a lot of good options right here, boom. We come out, we get this guy to move, we've got this corner off and middle closed. There's the window right there with no play action. Boom, got it, ball out of my hands, getting a chunk play. Very next play in the game, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna motion to the exact same thing. All right, so now this time, we're gonna change it up. So everything looks the same. Now on this side, we're gonna run a stick and a flat, okay, a stick and a flat over here. So this is a great play against any corner off where we can read that outside backer and bang, bang it, okay? And what they really do here is, I think this is a progression, but you could really read it either side. So now we're gonna release inside and we're gonna run an in route. Then we're gonna burst out there and we're gonna run another in route. And then we've got that same choice route. So everything looks the same as it did on the last play. Now we're just changing it up. So we can go one to two to three to four to five if we want, or we can split field, read this particular play. And so now we can come out and go, okay, if I've got this corner off, I like this look right here. And I'll read that outside backer, try to hit the hook. If this guy matches to it, then I work to number three inside, or I could just read the other side. And I say, I'm just gonna read, I'm gonna assume when I go inside, I'm gonna pull these guys inside. So now I could also simply run a high low right here off of the outside backer to that side. So I'll show you, we'll run this, we'll look at the back side right here, right? We're clearing this guy out. And now I would have a high low right here off of that linebacker. He wants to pull out, throw your in. He wants to drop back, throw your choice, I've got options to split field read it or to progression read it, and we got great options right there. Okay, now we're coming back in the exact same formation, third play in a row. 
Okay, same thing. Now this is what we call a read RPO. Okay, so now we're gonna read this guy. So it's like a zone read, right? We're gonna run, 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 run block all right there. We're gonna be able to hand it off to the back. If this guy sinks down, we would keep it. On a normal zone read, we would keep it and we would run around the end as a quarterback. On this RPO naked, okay, they're actually running a naked bootleg with the read. So if that guy steps down, now we've got a naked bootleg. So we're gonna run the same thing right there, that post, we're gonna run that rail, we're gonna bring Tyreek Hill back here to the flat, and then if we're running a normal naked, we would bring our backside on the over, which is what you're gonna have. So now, two is gonna read defensive end right there. Defensive end comes down, he knows that he's keeping it, okay? And the first read when he keeps it is, corners off, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna see if I can hit this rail, kind of quick rail right there, then I'm gonna work back to the flat over here. So great job by Tua to get the read off the defensive end, boom. Sees it, understands the corner's off, puts the back shoulder on his receiver right there, and we are rolling, and we are in great shape. Same presentation, three straight plays, three completely different pass plays. Okay, now we're gonna put a tight end in that wing spot. We're gonna motion Jalen Waddle over here, and we're gonna run a hard play action. Okay, so we're gonna go here, we're going to bring our tight end back here to block, to block, and we're gonna try to hit Tyreek Hill over the ball. If we can't hit Tyreek Hill over the ball, we're gonna come and replace right here with Jalen Waddle on the in over the top of it. So here we go, motion, play action, trying to get these guys to pull, pull, and then replace, okay? But even if they pull that way and they don't replace, now we're saving a big window here because we got everything from a so right here, see it, they do a nice job of kind of holding and covering it up, but they all still step down. Here's the throw right here. Jalen Waddle stumbles a little bit right there. That's why they end up missing this, I believe, but otherwise they get a completion. So now we've got the first three plays. I shouldn't say the first three. Two of the first three plays are going outside. And you've got two of the first four plays coming inside. So we're keeping the defense off balance by them not knowing, do they need to go outside, do they need to go inside? Are they going with the play fake or are they going with the straight drop back? Here we go again, same thing. Now we're gonna motion off of it, okay? Now, looks like we're running that same naked right here, but instead, right, as I said, everything was going to this side. Everything that we've thrown on those first four plays out of this formation, we're throwing to the left side, okay? Now, we're gonna change it up. So, okay, we're gonna give you this action again. You're holding back to that side where we're trying to throw everything. Now, we're gonna try to throw the in to that side, and then we'll come back with the seven stop, and this guy will finish on a swing. So if you move back in that direction, we're gonna believe that we have a high-low over here. Off of that, see it right there? Teddy misses it right there. There's the throw right there. We got these guys to move just like we wanted to. There's the throw right there. He misses the throw, not quite ready for it. And so he doesn't really have anything back here because the reason we have this throw is because we got the linebackers to move there. But now there's a guy underneath, so we don't really have a high low. Could probably get it down to his check down right here. But you see, we're changing it up and we're giving the same appearance, but we're attacking different ways, both sides of the field, sometimes inside, sometimes outside to keep the defense off balance. Here we go again. All right, so now we're doing the same thing. Motion him across, we're snapping it a little bit sooner. We're pulling the guard, we're bringing the back over this way. And now what we're gonna do is we've given the appearance of everything and running the skinnies to both sides. Now we're gonna do that action and we're gonna run the deep shot with the post here the deep over there, and then the swing to this side. So we're gonna to try to clear that out and truly get the high low right here is what we're working for on this particular play. Hold the linebackers, keep them underneath, then isolate the flat defender to this side. But we're always going to peak, especially when it's Tyree Kill, this guy right here. If I've got a safety in the middle of the field, does he jump the over? If I've got a safety that comes down in a quarters position, does he stay down on the play fake? And I'm gonna to try to get up over the top. And then if I don't get the post over the top, as I said, we've got this and this to work the flat defender. So here, you see it, 
coming off the play fake, middle closed. What does this guy do? He attaches to Jalen Waddle, gives me the big shot up over the top, and we're going to go get the post. But before we show the post aspect, look at this guy right here. So if this guy's running the over and this safety gets high, there we go. We've got our high low to this side to give our quarterback an option against every coverage here. Great read by Teddy Bridgewater. Great throw and a huge play on the deep post to Tyreek Hill. Okay, so now we're going to finish up right here. Same basic formation, but Jalen Waddle here uh, doesn't motion. Just imagine him motioning across here because they could motion there as well. And now we've got the naked bootleg again. Tyreek Hill coming down into this hole. The rail here. And this uh, drag underneath. And then the over. But we've got it tied in to the run here. So this time... We're reading again, reading this defensive end. We're going to bluff him right here. He comes up the field. Now we just hand off the run game. Boom. And now we're cutting back underneath him, getting a nice little chunk gain all off of the same presentation, same formation. Mike McDaniel's doing a really good job of building things that make sense, that progression read, that can give you options against every coverage. Yes, you got to throw them a little bit differently against every coverage, but it gives you options against every coverage. It keeps the defense off balance because they don't know if you're going outside, inside, handing the ball off, attacking them with a skinny post, going to the right, to the left. That's how you build a pass game, and they're doing it all off of their run formations. All right, a couple pass plays that I just want to look at, just all about teaching. Okay, so we're going to run what we call a T-seam, tailback seam. So he's going to run a seam right here. We're going to run a go to the outside. We're going to run a middle route to the inside. And we're going to try to pull everything out and then get this seam. And Tyreek Hill is going to fake the jet sweep and he will be our outlet here on the swing. All right, little details. Okay, understanding who can take away this seam. So the one thing that I like is you always want these guys to be at a different level. You want these guys to be deeper than this guy because the sooner I get to that corner, the more he's got to chase me and turn his back. The sooner I get through this Mike Backer, the more he's got to engage to me. And now all of a sudden, this guy sneaks out uh, over the top of these linebackers because they're coming up to tackle Tyreek Hill on the jet sweep, and we get the play that we want. Detail right here is I want to see Mike Gusecki here stay up through this Mike linebacker. You're still going to influence this safety. Everything that's really happening for Tua stays on his right-hand side or the bottom of the screen. So we don't want to just release and go flat here. We go flat here, it releases this Mike linebacker into the spot that we're trying to throw the seam. He's going to pass that off to the backside to somebody else. He's not going to chase you to the backside. So we want to try to fully engage him and stay with him. We can aim towards that backside hash, but we want to stay through it so he thinks we're attacking his zone. He turns his back. This guy, we're attacking his zone. He turns his back. Now here's the throw. See it as we'll play it right here. There's the throw. The throw's coming right here. But Mike Backer was released because we went flat right here. Stay high. Doesn't matter. You stay high, you'll influence the back safety. You stay high. If this guy closes the middle, you'll influence him as well with an opportunity to get the ball over to that side. So we want to make sure that we engage and understand this play concept is all about the front side. We don't need to leave and go to the back side where we're not influencing somebody that has a chance to take away that scene. Good job here by Tua to just dump it off and now we get a play, but the little details make huge differences on these different plays. Okay, this particular play here is what we call pogo. So it's a go on the outside and then we've got a corner here and then normally you run a flat right here, okay? And what we're trying to do is, you always ask the question when you're designing a play, who are you trying to throw it to? I'm trying to throw it to the corner route right there. So I'm trying to isolate some defender and go high, low right here. Now, sometimes coordinators can get a little bit cute, okay? And so what do I mean by that? So here, we're gonna start Tyreek Hill to the flat. We've got our corner coming here. We're trying to clear that outside area out. So it looks like we're getting the high low out here off of number 21. Great, great play. We're going to isolate him and we're going to have a shot. But on this particular play, they run Tyreek Hill to the flat and then they bring him back in here on a return. 
And the question I always ask is, why are you bringing him back on a return? Okay? Why are you bringing him back to an inside zone when you're trying to attack an outside zone? If you want to throw the corner, then just leave this guy on a flat. Leave him on a flat and force this guy to have to cover him. Don't give him any option or any opportunity to fall back and cover this corner so you're going to attack his zone. So you're going to watch this right here. And this is a great throw by Tua. But watch. This guy right here, okay? As Tyreek Hill goes to the flat, he's covering him. He's covering him. And then, as soon as Tyreek Hill stops to come back to the inside, what's it do? It frees him up to go, I don't have to cover Tyreek Hill anymore. I can fall back into this corner and cover this, okay? And so you'll see, great throw here by Tua. He hits what we call a hole shot on the, uh, on the corner route. So a normal hole shot is down the sideline, a hole between the corner and the safety, okay? On a corner route, what I call a corner hole shot is when you've got a, somebody sitting outside and you've got to hit it in this hole instead of letting this guy get to the boundary and truly high-lowing somebody underneath. So Tua throws a great hole shot right there. Boom, look at that. On the money, in between four defenders. I mean, it's just a great throw. But you see what I'm saying, right? You see this guy start to fall off and he's going to make this throw dicey if you don't make a perfect throw like Tua does. And the reason he does that is because instead of staying out here in the flat, so he has to cover it, we're releasing him to cover the corner by coming back to the inside. Now, a lot of people will say, well, on this play, if that's the case and this guy falls off, then just throw your return. Yes, on this play, you can do that because this defender gets a lot of depth. But let's go back and, and let's... Let these guys do what they're supposed to do. So if this guy's supposed to go out here and cover that flat to corner area, and this guy's supposed to stay in here and cover kind of the middle to the hook area and not get depth, we're gonna have one guy running to that defender and one guy running to this defender, and we're running different guys to different zones. You wanna attack a zone, you attack one player with two different guys. So we wanna high low a guy. If I wanted to, hit Tyreek Hill on the return, then I'm going to change Gusecki here. Instead of running the corner outside, I'm going to run him back on an in route. So why? Why are we running him on an in route? So if we're running corner flat, we're isolating outside linebacker with the high low, right? Now, if I want to run a return, that means Tyreek Hill's coming back to the inside. I want to run this guy to the inside so now my high low comes off of this inside backer and now if he were to do this we're running an in and he's to carry with depth then i can replace inside if he gets width or stays down then i could hit the in route back behind him if i was trying to run that type of concept so we got to be careful of getting too cute because we don't want to put our quarterback in a bind where oh shoot this guy falls off, this guy comes up. Now we have nothing because we're running different guys to different zones instead of overloading a particular zone on the field, which is how you have success against zone coverages. Great throw there by Tua though. Okay, last play, one of my favorite plays. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move Tyreek Hill to the back. And this is a play that we call F post. So we're gonna run an influence shallow here. So influence shallow, we're trying to get to the inside shoulder of this Mike back and we're trying to influence him to step to the backside. Off of that, Tyreek Hill is going to run the F post. So if I get that Mike linebacker to move to the backside, I get him influenced, then I'm going to try to hit this post right here. If this outside linebacker squeezes him, I want to have something here to recover to the outside. So he squeezes, now there's nobody left for the outside. So I'm hard for me to tell right here what they're doing exactly with the outside guys but you'll see you'll see what i'm talking about right there you got the influence shallow trying to grab that guy and then we're trying to replace here jalen waddle looks like he's running an out it's kind of slow and methodical so i'm not sure if he's running a return or not but a return would be good but we're replacing that guy so it goes read the mike linebacker i get him to work weak side now i get two on one off of this linebacker right there Okay, if I don't 
get the influence. So there's a step here and then the Mike linebacker does a good job. Now I'm in a bind to the front side. So now I would work back. If I get that Mike linebacker to push to the strong side, doesn't, isn't influenced by the shallow. Now I have to have something on the back side in which I want to attack. So again, you realize this guy's in a position to cover that on the back side. So just like on the last play, I want to replace him on the back side. So for me on this play, if I'm running it like this and I'm running the shallow here, I'd like to attack this guy to the inside. So now if this guy doesn't respect us and pushes strong, now I get my high low off of the weak side linebacker. This guy, I put him on a four spin, so he's inside and then back out, so he's the longest developing thing. So now if I work to the back side, I can work one to two and then recover all the way outside to my one-on-one -on -one three. But we wanna make sure that we understand where our problems are and where we can isolate a defender, where we need to isolate a defender to have a good play. Okay, one thing that I've done to change this uh, a little bit uh, so I don't have to worry about it as much is, is take this tight end right there and attack one yard inside the Mike linebacker and have him hook. Now, this width is really important so we don't stack on top of each other. And then whether you run the return or the under out here, again, patience and width to let everything clear out. But what can help a quarterback and make it easier is not to have this guy cross the formation. Because he crosses the formation, you gotta look to the left, then you gotta come back to the right and verify it. So I kinda changed this uh, to just put this guy to the front side. So now I can come out as a quarterback and I can work this guy to the weak side. Okay, with my eyes, first step, I'm gonna work him and hold him to the weak side. Then I'm gonna come back and go one, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna come back and try to hit Gusecki right over the ball. If he gets matched to by the Mike linebacker, hit him over the ball. If he gets matched to by the Mike linebacker, now I'm going to hit Tyreek Hill right on his break. If he gets matched to by the Sam linebacker, then I'm working all the way outside to Jalen Waddle. So a couple little nuances to help benefit you. If you're gonna run the shallow, make sure you're doing something with equal timing to attack what they're gonna have on the backside. If you don't wanna work that on the backside and you wanna put some solo two on two concept back here that you really like, some kind of man-to-man -man beater that you can just go there right now, then keep this all front side. Put three guys over here because very seldom are you gonna have three zone defenders underneath to one side. So now we keep everything to one side of the ball and we've got a chance to isolate these two defenders right there. Little details, things to think about. Keep it easier on your quarterback, but make sure your quarterback has answers no matter what this Mike linebacker does, right? He chases, we got something out the front side. He falls off, we want to make sure that we've got something off of the backside to replace the guy that now we have to isolate. All right, so there you go. Really, really good scheme by Mike McDaniels. Uh, I really love what he's doing and what he's building and the pass game that he gives his quarterbacks, given two a down there that makes sense. Progressions make sense. The understanding of what I'm seeing pre-snap connects to where my different throws are and the timing of those different throws. I've got things that go outside, things that go inside, things that are quick, things that are longer, right? We got everything built in. We're giving the same presentation to the defense and then we're showing them a whole bunch of different stuff based on how they're reacting through the course of the game. And then of course the run game just adds to that with different unique uh, run aspects that they have that go beyond just the one that, that I showed you. So really like that stuff. And then those last three plays were really just little detail things that I want all coordinators to think about when they're building their plays. The little nuances make all the difference in the world. Understanding route technique, who we want to attack on a particular play, how we're trying to isolate it. So play designer, understand what the quarterback has to see. Teach your receivers. Okay, this is what the quarterback's looking at. So this is why on that last play, F post, I need Mike Gusecki to go inside that Mike linebacker. Attack him inside and force him to step down on you. If he doesn't, you're getting the football and you're getting a touchdown. You get him to step down on you, now I know I have an isolation on the backside. So those are all the little details that make great passing games great. And they make it easy on the quarterback to understand why 
If I've got a particular look, why this guy can't be right. He goes high, I throw low. He goes inside, I throw outside. That is how you beat zone coverages. So you make sure that all of your concepts stack up together so your quarterback can make the game as easy as possible, as quickly as possible, and know exactly where his eyes need to be and where his reads have to go. And that's how you succeed playing the quarterback position.